Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. This is going to be my review and rules review of the Legio Custodes Caladius Grav Tank. I've called it Caladius because it just seems right to do so. Like the sword, a gladius sort of goes back Latin, Roman times, things like that. Here is the model. I'll start off by saying one of these will set you back £85 and then you've got your shipping and things. It, it, it is a lot of money, but it's quite a large model. Larger than I sort of thought it would be. Build-wise, I think I did it in a couple of hours, a few hours, something like that. Obviously after the, the washing and the prep side of things. Not too long. I'll, I'll go through all the parts of the model and things and then we'll, we'll discuss the rules. As you can see, it, it sort of goes on this base, which is odd for me to have a tank that goes on a base. I mean, I know I've got an Eldar army and there are, there are tanks that go on bases, but it just is odd to have just a, a Forge World resin model um, on sort of like a flying base. The base is not too bad. Obviously, it wobbles about and stuff, and that's because I just haven't glued it. I may even put a magnet in there just to aid with transportation. But if I just remove it off this little base, another reason why I haven't glued it is, one, it'll fog up with super glue. Uh, and I don't trust PVA to sort of hold that because um, it is quite heavy. Uh, and two, I want to have it separate so that I can spray it and, um, you know, pick it up, turn it over and paint details and things like that. So um, that's another reason why I haven't glued it to the base at all. And you could do the base sort of separate. Now, this is the tank itself. I think the cannons look absolutely amazing. These Iliastrus um, cannons, I've, I've really worked hard to get them as straight as possible. Um, if you see the unboxing, you'll see they are a little bit wonky. One's a little bit lower than the other. Um, and also one was sort of further apart or, or closer in, I can't remember. Um, but what I've done is I've magnetised the turret, which I highly suggest that you do, um, because it just makes it more solid and it moves and it stays and it won't tip or rattle or anything like that. Um, but that's the only magnetisation I've done on this. Uh, and he will, there you go. So I've just put a quite a large strong magnet in there. I didn't really have any issues with this. I think one of my subscribers said that there'd be an issue with the pipes at the back. Well, I don't know whether he was, he, he, he meant these or whether he meant that. Um, that did snap off uh, when I was clipping it off the uh, vent, uh, but it's easily repairable. And unless I'd just told you that, you wouldn't have noticed and you can't notice anyway. It's got these fins, which are so sort of quite cool and these uh, grav plates there's a lot of detail on here I love how these sort of mirror the the, the front um, plates uh, so I've got all these pipes too and that's where you put the base like I say you could fit a small magnet there a high powered one drill into there and then just magnetize the the flying stand but definitely have this glued onto there and definitely have it glued onto the the base um if you're going to go down that route the guns here the last run bolt cannons um they do move and they do rattle which i'm just not a big fan of uh the the firing arc is very very small and that's probably just to limit the chance of them you know firing the actual part of the tank um, but still, I, I think it's unnecessary, uh, it doesn't really add to much, because with these huge bulkhead kind of structures here, that already just gives a perspective that it has to move, and it has to move just to fire them. So having them move, I just, I don't know, I understand Forge World just giving you the, the option, but um, not needed in my opinion, and there's no other extra weapons and things that you could put there to replace it. Uh, God knows how a, a custodian even fits in there. I'm not even sure a custodian is in there. If he is, I don't think he's in his full plate armour or anything like that. Um, it's just hard to imagine any person being sat in there unless they're sort of uh, humanoid size, not wearing any armour. Um, they're also doing a transport as well, which looks very similar size-wise to this. That might come out next week. It might come out the week after. I really didn't think that they'd have these um, ready so quickly, but I think they were at the uh, open event, so um, they obviously do. But there you go, that's the sort of um, structure of the grav tank. And then these are the cannons themselves, lots of detail. Um, like I say, I've really tried to get them as straight as, as possible. It is difficult, um, but I think they're they're incredible looking. And the rules are really good too. So yeah, that just slots on there, like so, and that moves about. And 
you just put it in a pose. So I'm just going to show you it next to some custodians. There we are. Um, size wise, uh, it, yeah, it, it sort of works. I mean, it's difficult to, I don't know, I think, I think when it's painted sort of gold and red and, and things like that, it'll definitely blend in with them as it stands. Um, yeah, it sort of, sort of fits with them. Definitely very high tech. And these guys are definitely very high tech without the, um, you know, power packs and things. So there you go. That's, that's it next to the, uh, custodians. Um, size wise though, here's a, just a space Marine. Um, uh, that just gives you some sort of comparison there. And I'll just compare it to a Sakaran. So here it is next to a Sakaran. Uh, the, the way people were talking about it on the internet, um, I, I thought it was much, much bigger than a Sakaran, but, but it's not. Uh, Lengthwise, it does have this like extra bit, which is sort of the enclosed um, engine block, but it's only really probably about an inch longer. The turret is, yeah, it's bigger, slightly longer, it's not as, as sort of stubby and I was really hoping that you could just swap them ara around but nah unless, unless you do some serious um, conversion I don't think you're going to be putting these illustrious uh, accelerator cannons on a Sakaran any anytime soon but um, who knows I'm sure someone will obviously the Sakaran has these side sponsons and it has this uh, heavy bolter there you could you could also put a a cupola sort of mounted heavy bolter on there too whereas this has just got the two the two weapon loadouts. What I'll do now is I'll just run through the rules of the uh, Caladius tank and then I will actually compare the rules to a Sakaran. Um, just because just I've done the size comparison and things. Uh, so one of these will set you back. They are expensive experimental rules, um, may I add, and uh, they'll probably be coming out in the book seven of the, the Horus Heresy range, January, February next year, I think. So your ballistic skill is five. That's already very decent. Your front and side armor is 13. Your rear is 11. You've got three hull points. Uh, it's a fast um, skimmer. It's got a twin-linked Lastrum bolt cannon and a turret-mounted twin-linked Iliastus accelerator cannon. It's got a flare shield and a machine spirit. Special rules, it's got deep strike outflank and grav backwash. Uh, it can also take armored ceramite, um, searchlight and extra armor. The Grav Backwash, unless the vehicle has become immobilised, attackers suffer a minus two to hit in Assault. That's pretty debilitating, minus two in Assault. The turret weapon, Iliastus Accelerator Cannon, is a range 60 inch, strength seven, AP two, is a heavy three, rending, rapid tracking, and hel heliothermic detonation. Rapid tra tracking, of course, uh, targets can't take jinx saves, and heliothermic detonation, if any target suffers one or more unsafe wounds and they're not slain, they must take an immediate toughness test. Um, if the test is failed, they suffer instant death. Uh, and if a vehicle suffers a penetrating hit from the weapon, you add plus um, one to the result rolled on the vehicle damage table. It's got th so it's got three shots, strength seven, but it's very good range uh, and it's and it's rending. So if it gets a penetrating hit, then yeah, it's it's going to cause a fair bit of damage. The twin-linked blaster and bolt cannon uh, at the front has a range of 36 inches, so strength 6, AP 3, heavy 3, and it's got the heliothermic detonation rule also. So that's important. So pretty much you're getting twin-linked turret, twin-linked blaster and bolt cannon. So you're getting the six shots, and they've both got this heliothermic detonation. So the bolt cannon at the front is, you know, like a bolt cannon pretty much, but it's got this, this extra rule. It forms part of Talons of the Emperor Army list uh, found in Book 7, Inferno. However, you can use it in your Age of Darkness games. Uh, I've got the rules here, look. Uh, they're free on the website, you can just download them. It's basically taken as a heavy support choice for a Loyalist um, faction for each Custode squad within the army, up to usual limits. So it's, it's pretty decent, fast skimmer, it's got, you know, the, the six shots that are twin linked. Let's just compare it to the Sakaran. The Sakaran, price wise, the Sakaran um, is, is £79 now, so it is £6 cheaper than one of these, but obviously they're not both Space Marines. This is Space Marines, this is Custodians. So it's not like you really have a choice between one or the other for sort of one army, if that makes sense. So comparing it to the Sakaran Battle Tank, it costs more points, the Sakaran's 165, so it's 30 points more, but the Sakaran's uh, main weapon, as you probably all know, is an accelerator autocannon um, with a range of 48 inches. 
it's only AP4, but it does have six shots and it's got the rapid tracking and, and rending rules. So although it has double the amount of shots, it's got less range and the AP is, is four compared to the AP of two of the Iliastus. And obviously the Iliastus has the heliothermic and it's got the, the grav backwash too, uh, minus two to hit. Um, whereas obviously Sakara and that depends on how far it's moved, if it's moved at all. Um, armour wise, Caladius has the 13 uh, front and side and 11 rear, whereas the Sakaran has the 13 front, but it has 12 side, but it also has 12 rear. So it has one better at the rear, but one less on the side. Um, like I said before, you've got the heavy bolter in there, you can take the Sponson weapons. This particular loadout here uh, will be 185 points. If you want to give it Armoured Ceramite, then that's going to be 205. If you want to give uh, the Caladius Armoured Ceramite, that's going to be 115. So 10 points more um, for the sort of equivalent. And remember, it's also got a Flare Shield too. Very important to, to not forget that and the machine spirit. So it could fire that at something and that at something and also um, how far it's uh, travelled isn't as much of an issue. So price wise, the Sakaran is a little bit cheaper than the uh, Caladius and points wise, there's not much in it e either. Uh, and you, it does seem like you get a lot for your points for the uh, Caladius at the moment. Um, like I say, 215 points with the Armoured Ceramite, the Flare Shield, the Machine Spirit, um, those, that 60 inch range uh, turret and the uh, Heliothermic and the Grav Backwash. It's a fast skimmer, 13 armour, front and sides with an 11 at the rear. It does seem like you're getting a lot for your, you know, your points. But that may well be revised. I think Sakaran's um, used to be cheaper points wise uh, and now they're at 165. So, but there you go. I thought that'd just be a, a decent comparison because they're sort of in the same ish image. They're both fast, medium tanks, I'd say. I think if you had two of these um, zipping around the board, uh, flanking enemy armor and things, um, or, or troops, I think they're quite multi purpose. I think they'd survive well if something were to creep up on them by surprise. But also, they'd function quite well on their own. Uh, there's no need for you to have your um, custodians sort of around them, protecting them at all or anything like that. Um, they're a bit of a unit themselves. So I thought I'd just make those comparisons between the two tanks. And there you have it. That is the end of my review. Uh, in summary, I think it's a gorgeous looking tank. I think it fits the custodian look very well, especially when it will be sort of painted gold and with red highlights and things. It's definitely very sort of futuristic, very sci-fi. Um, it's just really nice to see a grav tank um, that, that belongs to sort of the Imperium, if that makes sense. I'm sure I've seen a picture in my Horus Heresy book of like a grav um, Rhino at some some point. It's just really nice to see the Imperium have that technology for these uh, these tanks and quite good tanks in my opinion too with all those extra sort of rules and things. At first I thought it was a bit overpriced but actually with the rules and things and the, the large parts I've changed my view from the initial um, impressions and I definitely think it's it's worth it um, and it'll be worth it in in games too. So thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching The Emperor Protects.